day, but he is poised, confidence, and experience, and he thinks that he is ready to take the crown back that he lost, and you saw him against Artrius. January 30, 1982, here on CBS, Ernesto Espana, the Black Trunks, trying to win the WBA lightweight crown for the third time against Art Frias, the then champion. Through the early rounds, it was a close fight, but Frias had started to take it away. Late in the ninth round, suddenly a bad gash opens under the left eye of the champion Frias in blue. The referee from Korea comes in and stops the action, takes a close look at the gash, and rules Espana back to the neutral corner. The referee saying that the cut came from an accidental butt. In those circumstances, under WBA rules, if the fighter is unable to continue, they look at the scorecards. At this point, Frias was ahead. When the doctor on the left ruled that he could not continue, the cards then gave Frias a technical decision and he retained his title. España felt it should have been otherwise. Bueno, gracias a la televisión, pues se me se dio a mí la nueva yes, oportunidad porque uh, por thank you to television uh, comprobó, by the videotape, you can see there was a left hook de que la pelea de la un golpe de izquierda, un gancho de izquierda. Entering the ring, there is still a fair amount of sun in his corner. And he squints against it as he starts to shake out here in the ring. Ernesto Espana, the challenger and the crowd with their boom boom banners. And here is the of the crowd for the champion. Ray Boom Boom Man City from near Youngstown, this Mahoning Valley area made up of the towns of Youngstown, Warren, Niles, Michigan, Ohio, of course, and they are all here in force today. Here is the champion making his first title defense and having the opportunity to do so in front of a hugely partisan crowd under perfect weather conditions here in Warren. Mollenkopf Stadium is the home stadium of Harding High School and one of the prominent alumni sports-wise from Harding is Paul Warfield, the great Cleveland Browns star. Willie Davenport began his hurdles career here from rival Howland High. Many other athletes, Ross Brown and others have come through. And here comes Boom Boom Mancini toward the ring as the entire crowd can now see him. championship temperatures in the 80s here at Malenkov Stadium let's go up to the ring announcer Lynn Campana good afternoon welcome to Warren Ohio and welcome to Malenkov Stadium this is the main event of the afternoon 15 rounds of boxing for the World Boxing Association lightweight championship of the world Introducing in the blue corner, a former lightweight champion of the world. He is currently rated the number one WBA contender, weighing in at 133 and a quarter pounds, with a record of 36 wins and four losses. 30 wins coming by way of knockout from La Flor, Venezuela. Let's have a warm welcome for Ernesto Espana. His opponent this afternoon, making his first title defense, weighing in at 135 pounds. Three wins, 
wins and one loss, 18 wins coming by way of knockout from Youngstown, Ohio, ladies and gentlemen, the World Boxing Association, lightweight champion of the world, Ray Boom Boom Mancini. Ray Mancini, five foot five, 135 pounds. Ernesto Espana, the challenger, five foot 10, 133 and three quarters pounds. Espana won this title by a knockout of Claude Noel when it was vacant in June of 79. As we look at the tail of the tape, those figures evident to you, the height and reach Let's advantage go. to Espana. Okay. Espana right. defended successfully against Johnny Lira, then lost it to Hilmer Kenty in March of 1980. Lost again in a rematch in September of 1980. Lost again on the technical decision to Art Frias, January 30th of 82 here on CBS. A perennial number one contender, it seems, as placed there by the WBA Championship Committee. Here he is again, and facing Boom Boom Mancini in his own hometown, Warren, Ohio. The referee is Stanley Christodoulou. He will figure in the scoring. The judges, Les Muller, also from South Africa, and Chung Young Su from South Korea. Christodoulou from Johannesburg, South Africa, an experienced WBA referee. Mancini in red, Espana in black. Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, and Sugar Ray Leonard with the commentary today. Tim, Espana has legs like a giraffe. He lopes around the ring. His legs are almost as tall as Mancini. Ray, I'm sure you would agree with Gil Espana will be at his most dangerous in the early rounds. I would say that. I would totally agree, Tim. I feel that this round is a very... Uh, a uh, dangerous round for Mancini because he can't get over anxious and rush into Espanya because Espanya's been around, he knows the ring. So this round here is very important. So far, Mancini is very, very tight. In the fight with Arthreus, he got hurt early in the first round too, Ray. Doesn't pay to be in there when you're all tight. You get nailed with one good punch and it can be very effective. We can understand that Mancini lifts weight. And this could be a factor as far as tighten his muscles up. Well, I've never been for weightlifting. Apparently, so far, it's worked successfully for the Ray Mancini. Well, just to clarify that, he has worked primarily on the Nautilus equipment, which is not lifting free weights. And in the six-week uh, training period for this fight, he did not even use the Nautilus, but he did use some other special exercises involving carrying weights on his back uh, during push-ups and uh, running exercises from his trainer, Murphy Griffin. Espanya just threw a vicious right hand uppercut to him. It just missed. But that's probably his most dangerous punch. And a punch like that can rip you wide open if it catches you. The spot is trying to set Mancini up for overhand right. I notice he extend his left jab and trying to keep it out there for just a fraction of a second. Espanya caught by a right hook to the body, knocked off balance, but Mancini unable to follow up effectively. Round one, scheduled for 15 to go in this first round. Brilliant blue skies here in Warren, Ohio. Temperatures in the high 80s. This is a fight, Tim, where a guy could say he got knocked out because he didn't, didn't see the punch. The sun was in his eyes. <laughs> That's right. Could happen. There is a canopy, we might point out, offering some protection to the fighters in terms of the sun. But right now, where the position of the sun is, off to our left, it is uh, flooding the ring. Good solid left jab by Mancini. Under 20 seconds to go in round number one. Neither fighter has landed a really tough blow. The best one, a body shot from Mancini. Final seconds, round one. Number two scheduled for 15. Under the blue skies in Warren, Ohio, the champion in red. The challenger, Espana, in black. That first round, Espana was pretty much trying to measure the short of Mancini. Mancini landed a solid left hook. The last exchange. Ray, have you ever fought outdoors in this kind of heat? Oh, yes, I remember Tommy Harris, and that was a factor. That heat, it really takes its toll because as the rounds go by, especially if they're fast-paced rounds, 
you've really become totally exhausted, dehydrated. Good solid left jab by Mancini. Of course, the crowd will cheer every punch that he even throws, let alone lands. We'll uh, be interpreting those which are most effective for you at home. Mancini's working that body pretty good now, Tim. He's landed a couple of good left hooks underneath. Then that sets up the hook on the chin. But Gil, I feel that's going to be right good hand solid. Hand. That was a beautiful right, right hand. But those body shots Mancini is trying to deliver could really help him out against the taller uh, spine. Espana is one of the few fighters that I've ever seen that actually looks like he's in pain when he gets hit with a punch. He really has a look of pain on his face. You notice that, Ray? Yes. <laughs> his expression is deceptive, but he still tries to set uh, Mancini up for that overhand right. In addition to claiming that uh, the, the punch that caused the cut on Art Prius's face came from a punch and not a butt, Espana also feels that uh, he didn't have enough time to train for that fight. He's ready for this one. Three months in the gym for this Mancini title fight. He's 27 years of age, and as Gil Clancy pointed out, some think uh, maybe that uh, those legs would not hold up over a long bout. Especially when you're backing up, Tim. Legs weren't made to go backwards. If you can back a guy up long enough, you're going to wear him out. Under a minute to go, round two. Espana trying that right uppercut again, but Mancini blocked it. blessed with hand speed. One thing uh, that he seems to do is to telegraph most of his punches. Well, he gets away with it, Tim, because he's so tall. But ordinarily, a fighter can't do that. Telegraph a punch. Mancini has led with a couple of right hands to the head, which could prove dangerous, because he hangs like, he leaves himself wide open when he does that. He's trying to reach for that tall target. That's better. He's moving behind that chair. At the 10-second mark of round number two, we'll be back with more boxing action after this word from your local station. Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard. We're looking into the corner of the champion, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, as we await the beginning of round number three, scheduled for 15. Mancini off the stool in a hurry for this third round. They were, using a, they were using a little pressure, a little ice on the Mancini's left eye, Tim, between rounds. I didn't, I didn't notice any swelling, but uh, perhaps there was. That seemed to be a little redness on the corner of the left eye. Good solid body shot for Mancini. Just missed with a right hook to the chin. Mancini's doing the right thing. He's carried a fight to uh, Espana, keep the pressure on, trying to work the body, and trying to score some points. You mentioned that Espana moves around the ring like a giraffe, Tim, and you mentioned that his hands were a little slow. But in previous fights, they've been very, very accurate. Espana had a string of early knockouts back in his career. Good left hand by Mancini and a right hand. That wobbled Espana. Knocked him off his the soles of his feet momentarily. This is what Man City can't do. He can't get over anxious and rush himself because Espana is just a cool guy. He takes his time. There's that right hand uppercut. Ray, he's looking, to, he's looking to nail Ray with that right uppercut. There it is again. There it is again. And there it is again. Well, Gil, he's really trying to, he's really setting it up now. Espana is really trying to set that right hand up. That is his best punch, and it, as they say, it's a punch that can rip you wide open, catches you just right. Very dangerous punch. It's also a dangerous punch to throw, though, because you can count, you can get counted pretty good with a left hook. You throw with that right hand down. Good left hand scored by Mancini. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line. There'll be a station break at the end of this third round. Good right hand by Espana to the midsection of Mancini. Mancini digs a left back. Under a minute to go in round three. Mancini backing up Espana. I don't feel Espana can keep this up at this pace. It's been a very fast pace for the opening round. Mancini missed with a right and then a left. Solid left uppercut from Espana scored. 
seems like Messina is a little dazed from that left hook. Espana digging that uppercut inside, but Mancini smothering it. Under 30 seconds to go, closer to 20 now. There is some blood under the right eye of Boom Boom Mancini. We'll be back with more boxing action after this word from your local station. There is a look from the helicopter of the crowd of about 20,000 here at Mullenkopf Stadium, the Harding High School home field in Warren, Ohio. It is filled with Mancini partisans, the challenger in black, Ernesto Espana, former WBA champion. A warning to Espana for holding from referee Chris Dula, Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard at ringside, live on CBS Sports Saturday. Mancini came out very purposefully at the start of this round, Tim. He ran across the ring. I just don't like him throwing those right hands to the head. That left hook is his best punch in this fight. Landed a good solid left hook. Among the personalities at ringside, Sylvester Stallone. You see the experience of Espana as he utilized the whole ring. He's not on stationary top unless he's trying to set up. Good right hand by Mancini. Best punch of the fight. He set it up with a good left hook to the body, Tim. That's what he should do. Work that body and then go back up to the head. Espana continues to lead with that left uppercut. Mancini with the left hook, and I think that Mancini, I mean, Espana is trying to do the same thing. I guess he feels that Mancini is vulnerable for left hook. Mancini punches a lot faster than uh, Espana, Ray, and when they do start to trade left hooks, Mancini's been beating him for the punch so far. Do you notice that expression of pain on Espana's face? It's really strange. It's unusual. He's, he's practically saying, please don't hit me. I guess I'd say the same thing, though. Mancini did not land anything effective in that last exchange. Espana blocked him well with his arms. Two titans meeting on that last exchange. Keep an eye on the way that Espana delivers. It's like an uppercut, the left uppercut. It raises Mancini's head. Mancini digging that right hand of the body. Good left hand by Mancini, and that rocked Espana. Under a minute to go. Round four. With a guy like Espana, Tim, you don't have to hit him with one big punch. What you have to do is put him together and take him apart. Big mistake is to try to nail him with one big punch. Again, that leading left uppercut from Espana. Mancini's been picking it up a little better in this round. 30 seconds to go, round four. Now, Ray is forgetting all about that left jab. He should be moving in behind that jab. He's leaping in with big punches. He heard me, Tim. I think he did, Gil. That, that jab of Mancini is very strong, and he should, do, he should continue to use it. Final seconds of round number four with Mancini on the attack at the ropes. Good left hand. <laughs> round number five, and Mancini opens it with a good solid left hook. Referee Stanley Christodoulou separates them. Mancini quickly to the attack in this fifth round. It appeared he had Espana in a little trouble near the end of round four. And perhaps Mancini's corner people told him, go get it. They just banged heads, Tim. I hope nobody's cut. Good right hand by Mancini. Again, it was set up by the two punches to the body, Tim. The inside fight is to Mancini's favor. Mancini adding to the pressure now. Espana backing up. Some of his earlier fights, Mancini threw as many as 120 punches around. We're seeing a little more out of pressure. It's getting a little wild, though, Tim. He just has to shorten them up and put them together. That's all. Espana, meanwhile, landed a good right uppercut inside. Mancini's reaching. Well, Mancini's starting to telegraph his punches. And an experienced fighter like Espana can see that. He can sense that, and he'll come back with something. And 
Mancini corner telling him to keep working. Ray, there's got to be some pressure on Mancini to try and win here by a knockout in front of his hometown crowd. And, of course, you got to be careful when you're trying to do that, don't you? That's true, Tim. He's trying to put up a very impressive showing, especially to get a knockout. But he should take his time. And uh, I still like the way he's uh, approaching this fight. Especially in this heat, Tim. I've seen plenty of guys be right ahead. And just, just all of a sudden deflate like a balloon. Just landed a good left hand that set Espana back on his heels again. Espana has lost only four times in 40 professional fights. Right hand by Mancini grazed him under a minute to go. Round number five. Tim Ryan, Bill Clancy, Sugar Ray Leonard live on CBS Sports Saturday. The Mancini Festival in Warren, Ohio. keeps it to me to throw that uppercut, and he's going to get caught by an overhand right. Mancini's throwing punches from around the corner now. He should get himself back together, start using that jab again. Set up his combinations. Good right hand to the midsection, slow to Spagna down. He's still holding on. Final seconds. Round five. Number six scheduled for 15, and the Espana people spilling the ice in the corner. Referee Chris Adulu pulling the fighters apart until they can scoop it out. And Mancini comes right to the attack again here in round number six. Espana doesn't look like he has a leg under him, Tim. Good, a good stiff jab now. If you back him up, then he can set it, set, hit him with anything he wants to hit him with. Well, that ice in the corner was just enough to give Espana a little more rest because I think he's still a little dazed from that fifth round attack. Good right hand scored by Mancini. You're listening to Sugar Ray Leonard, Gil Clancy with Tim Ryan. Live from Mullen Cop Stadium. Warren, Ohio. I, so I, rem I remember in your fight with, with Tommy Hearns, you had him hurt, you had him hurt, and you banged him around, and you didn't get him out of there that one round. Then did you rest around the two? Did you Wait. try to pace yourself a little bit? Well, I had to rest for two rounds because okay. I really, that round, oh. the sixth round, I hurt him. I really got all anxious. Well, that's exactly what he is. He's very effective, but if he doesn't get the guy out of there, he can maybe punch himself out. Mancini has him in trouble now with two solid left hands, followed by a right. Espana now somewhat desperate, holding on here. Mancini calmly trying to press the advantage. Well, for sure, Ray is not worried about pacing himself, Tim. He's going all out, letting it all hang out. Left jab backed up Espana again. Now Mancini pushes him into the ropes. He knows where Ray is working the body. He's doing the right thing now. Espana obviously losing the legs here. We're in round number six. Right hand by Mancini. He may not let the sun become a factor in the heat we talked about in your fight against Turns at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. The sun may not be a factor at all, and Mancini can keep this up. Tim, he's taking Espana apart. He's so much physically stronger than Espana. He just pushes him off him. It's been a very strategic fight for Mancini. He slowed down Espana, and now he's making Espana fight his fight inside. Espana's legs are obviously going on him, starting to wobble around the ring just to keep his balance. Mancini pressuring, pressuring. Left hook to the ear, back up Espana again, a left and a right. A right and a left. Solid punches for Mancini and Espana. To Espana's credit, Tim, he's still up there. And he's punching back. Trying a desperate uppercut that missed by several inches. Final seconds to go round six. Mancini taking full command in this round. Espana in trouble on the ropes again. This won't go down. the fight after.
after the bell. The bell had sounded. We could hear it. Espana was in difficulty, but had not gone down. There is no such thing as a standing eight count, so therefore, it was a question of the fight actually ending after the bell that signaled the end of round six. This bell here to our left is not a very large or noisy bell, and the referee evidently did not hear the bell. Mancini was still punching. He apparently didn't hear it, and the referee, Chris Adulu, stepped in front and stopped the fight. Tim, I think it was all academic. Espana couldn't have gone much further anyhow, but the fight was definitely stopped after the bell rang. Well, it is all over, and Stanley Christodoulou, the referee, apparently even to this moment, uh, does not realize that the bell had sounded. He has not been over near the timekeeper, but he clearly stopped the fight because he thought Espana had taken too much punishment. So Ray Mancini has defended his title for the first time, the WBA crown he won from Art Prius here on CBS. A sixth round knockout, although as we have indicated, the stoppage came after the bell. Let's go back and see what happened, and here's the call. There's the bell, you can hear it. Mancini, Mancini cannot hear it. hear the bell. There was a towel thrown in, Tim. Was there a towel thrown in from yes. the other corner, Ray? Yes, I Not that out. officially that cannot stop the fight, but that would at least indicate that the Espana people agreed uh, with uh, Stanley Christodoulou, if indeed that was their intention. We'll have to ask them that, of course. Well, Tim, as, as I said before, Tim, it was all academic. Espana wasn't going much further anyhow. The worst, the best he could have done was get off the stool to start the next round. I, I couldn't agree more. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Stanley Christodoulou felt that he had had enough. But nonetheless, uh, through the... The uh, quirks of the fact that uh, with the noise in the stadium and the rather weak-sounding bell, neither the referee nor the boxer Mancini, and probably Espana, heard the bell. So it is a knockout victory for the champion, Boom Boom Mancini, over Ernesto Espana. We'll try and get a clarification of, of exactly what happened as we see the scene in the ring. His manager, Dave Wolf. And we'll be going up into the ring to talk with Mancini and get the rest of the facts surrounding the finish of the fight after six rounds of boxing at Mullenkopf Stadium in Warren, Ohio. We'll return here in a moment. Let's go to John Tesh in New York. We're back here in Warren, Ohio. And uh, Ray Mancini, the WBA champion, is with us. Also the referee, Stanley Christodoulou. I want to have a quick word with Stanley. Stanley, uh, the bell apparently rang before you stopped the fight. Did you hear the bell ending the round? No, I did not. I stopped the fight, and immediately I waved the fight over. I heard the bell sound. So in your judgment, uh, Spania could not continue. You thought the yeah, fight should have yeah. been stopped. Exactly. I stopped the fight, said it for the punishment. All right, so it's just a question of you're not hearing the bell. Apparently Mancini didn't hear it either, because he was still punching when you stepped in. Well, when I stepped in, you can imagine the crescendo of the crowd. The bell was indistinct, because I never heard nothing. When I stopped the fight and I waved, my, waved the fight over, then I heard the bell, and the bell kept sounding. And the fight was all over. I had stopped the fight when the bell had sounded off. Okay, thank you very much. Stanley Christodoulou, one of the veteran WBA referees, and he had stopped the fight, uh, as we showed you, and uh, you heard the bell had sounded, but uh, nonetheless, his spiny was done. Here is the champion with his entire family, Lenny, his mother Ellen, uh, Ray. I know how badly he wanted to win this fight here today. I guess as much or more so than winning the title because it was in front of your home crowd. Absolutely, Tim. A lot of people said, well, now he's won the title for his father. Is there still desire, fire behind him to keep going? And I said, I'm hungrier now more than ever because I know what lies ahead for me. And I just showed it. I'm, I, as far as the number one contender, he's, he's a, you know, a good, good challenger. He's the number one contender with former champ. And uh, I tell you what, that's the, you know, the way I wanted to beat him was good and show the people that there's a lot of fire behind me and uh, we're going to be around for a while. Ray, the feeling was that he would be most dangerous in the first couple of rounds. What was your game plan? Well, rip that body, concentrated body attack. And uh, we stuck to it all the way. I, hit, I was hitting with them left hooks and them right hands, and I earned grunt and grunt, and I said it was just a matter of time. Uh, he's a good guy. He gives a lot of heart and soul. He's always in there, stays from, you know, as long as he can. I just don't think he has it anymore, and uh, I mean, I think I took a lot out of him. I banged him around pretty good, but uh, I congratulate him. He's got a ton of heart. He's a great fighter, and uh, I'm just going to... Ray, did you hear the bell at the end of round six? I heard, uh, I heard the bell. Uh, well, no, I didn't. Uh, I said it was duo separated. That was... You, know. you hadn't heard the bell at that point? No, not at all. Well, he uh, he already told us he didn't hear it either. It was not a real uh, noisy bell here in Warren, Ohio, so next time when you fight here, I bet they get you a big bell. All right. Now, this is, of course, uh, Father Lenny, and uh, uh, Len, 
One thing we've noticed in uh, seeing you during this past week is that the, the success of your son seems to have given you a new lease on life. Are you thinking about a comeback? I'm, ready, I'm making a comeback now. <laughs> you sure are. And listen, here's a young man we haven't met in this family. My nephew Jason, my pride and joy, right? All here. right, Jason, you got yourself on national television with the champion Ray Mancini. Congratulations to you. You were ahead on all three cards when the fight was stopped by the referee Stanley Christodoulou. Now let's return to our studios in New York once again and John Tesh. Thank you very much.